first to six, a major blow for prosecutors in that historic female genital mutilation case. A federal judge ruling today that the nation's FGM law is unconstitutional. As a result, a number of key charges against two local doctors and others in the case are being dismissed. 7 Action News reporter Jim Kirchner has been following this case from the very beginning. And Jim is live with us right now. So how's the defense reacting to this news today, Jim? Defense attorney Shannon Smith says the way this was passed by Congress made this unconstitutional, and the judge agreed. Absolutely, a huge victory. And when you actually studied the law they enacted, there was no constitutional basis for them to enact the law. It's really an issue that should be left to the states. Dr. Jumana Nargawala is accused of performing female genital mutilation on preteen girls from Michigan, Minnesota, and Illinois and that the painful procedures were performed inside this clinic in Livonia, owned by Dr. Fakhrudin Attar and his wife, Frida. Those three and one of the mothers are still charged with obstruction of justice and traveling to perform a sex act up to 30 years in prison. All of the people in the case are part of a Muslim sect from India known as uh, Duwadi Bora. The doctors were part of a mosque based in Farmington Hills. From the beginning, they denied this was FGM, but rather a mild form of female circumcision. What Dr. Nagarwala was doing, if we had gone to trial, I think she would have been vindicated that she was not mutilating little girls. While we're happy with the victory and we'll certainly take it, it's almost, there's a part of me that's a little bit disappointed that the public is not going to see the evidence brought out at a trial to see that she was never guilty of it in the first place. Now, the defense attorney says all of the young girls in this case were examined, and there's a big difference of opinion exactly what was done to them. The U.S. Attorney's Office is expected to appeal, but for now, the, now the trial on the remaining charges tentatively set for April of next year. For the eight originally charged, all parents of these young girls tonight have their charges cleared. On IndiaAbroad.com, published on November 25th, Charges dropped against Dr. Jumana Nargawala in federal genital mutilation case. Um, this basically has the same information from the video we just watched. There was some information in here that I did want to go over, so let me just get to that real quick. All right, down here. A report in The Guardian indicates that several human rights groups like Equality Now and the AHA Foundation are urging for an appeal. According to Equality Now, FGM is a national crime concern with as many as 500,000 women and girls in America at risk of being cut, off, cut or already have been. The organization said the decision is perceived by FGM survivors around the world as a punch in the gut, including the many women and girls who have shared their intimate and personal stories of living with the negative mental and physical effects of FGM. Yasmin Hassan, Executive Global Director for Equality Now, an international women's rights organization, told the Detroit Free Press that the ruling sends a disturbing message to women and girls. It says you are not important, Hassan said, calling the ruling a federal blessing for FGM. The AHA Foundation in a press released posted on its website said it is shocked by decision. The judge's ruling effectively throws out a federal law that has criminalized female genital mutilation since 1996. AHA Senior Director Amanda Parker said, the judge's ruling that the federal statute against FGM is unconstitutional sets a precedent that cutting girls' genitals is not a concern at national level. So that was pretty disheartening to hear that report. Um, you know, it's, there's no justice in this world. There's no just judges. There will be no righteousness until the Most High comes with his kingdom. So it's it was just sad to hear that. Um, let's see. So I did find here on the Michigan Commission on Law Enforcement Standards, it does talk about female genital mutilation training. Um, so there's a statute that defines the crime of female genital mutilation and making it a 15-year felony. Of course, this was introduced or put into law in 2017 after, um, you know, the case that I'm reporting on. So, you know, those laws don't, don't um, take effect for her case. So that's 
basically why at this time she's had most of the charges dropped. But um, I just wanted to take a look at this real quick. It just I just want to read what this says. It says uh, the law refers to FGM as an offense against women under the age of 18 years. It is estimated over 500,000 women and girls are at risk in the United States and over 10,000 may be living in Michigan. FGM has no health benefits and can cause long-term physical and psychological problems. The behavioral indicators of FGM are the same as the indicators of other types of child abuse and trauma. It off if officers suspect a case of FGM, they must work with Child Protective Services and other relevant community professionals as the investigation proceeds. Further local forensic interviewing protocols must be followed when interviewing victims of FGM. So I just um, had look this up and then I saw this link so I just wanted to take a peek at this real quick because it had it's it's training that you know professionals can sign up for to take but um, I just thought it was interesting because oh that's once you went here you could actually download the presentation so that's what I was looking at on this presentation there's some really good information here um, it talks about you know what it is obviously um, let me just scroll down here a second till I find what I was looking at. You can go to, I'll leave the links because you can go and read this if you're interested in reading it. So if you look at this, it says there's actually four major types of FGM. Type 1, clitoridectomy partial or total removal of the clitoris, and in very rare cases, only the prepuce. Type 2, excision, partial or total removal of the clitoris and the labia minora, with or without excision of the labia majora. Um, type 3, infibulation, narrowing of the va vaginal opening through the creation of a covering seal. The seal is formed by cutting and repositioning the inner or outer labia with or without removal of the clitoris. Type four, other. All other harmful procedures to the female genitalia for non-medical purposes, example, pricking, piercing, incising, scraping, and cauterizing the genital area. So, oh, I just think that all of those sound very, very painful. And I'm I'm just I just don't understand why they feel that the most high's creation wasn't wasn't right because in my opinion that's what they're doing is going against the most high the most high created the woman out of the man I mean there everything's perfect in the most that the most high creates so I don't know why they feel they need to do this and the thought that this doctor got away with it it just saddens me and who else has gotten away with it lots of people um but anyway, you might want to go and just read this. It's just got a lot of information. I, I'm not going to read, I don't think. there. Wait, wait a minute. There might be one other thing I saw. Psychological consequences. Talks about the different states that have laws against this. The number, um, the states, the total number of women in the U.S. have undergone or at risk of FGM is estimated at up to 513,000. <sighs> I might have missed something that I was looking at when I originally looked at it because I feel like there was something else that I wanted to read. But anyhow, that's there. That's going to be, there's going to be a link to that. So you'll be able to read through any of this if you want to, you know. Um, I just wanted to put the report out there. And I hope the Most High will come quickly. Thanks for watching.